Hi guys and welcome to my next video. My next video is going to be some colouring again which I first saw demonstrated by the late Mark Rabbi um, very very good colouring artist. I was also reminded by David Aitkinson of how to do this so I done one the other night put a photo on turners around the globe uh, so I'll show you what I'm going to do what I use and how I do it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so this is hopefully what I'm going to show you tonight. Um, this particular one is a piece of lime just with acrylic metallic paints. Okay, so tonight I'm going to be using a piece of sycamore, nice plain wood, ideal for colouring. This one is about six, six and a half inches by about four, four inches roughly. Okay, so let's get started. Turn the lathe on. Going at a fairly high speed, and we'll initially just rough shape it. Very roughly shaking it to start with. More refining. the base to be roughly the same as the neck itself maybe slightly larger just for a bit of stability uh, you can go smaller in fact let's go just a little bit smaller so we'll just trim it down want to leave enough strength in the bottom just now for when I actually hollow out the inside. So the shape is nearly there on the outside. So I'll just quickly shear scrape to the side, just the sharp edge of the spindle gouge until I'm roughly happy with it. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with that shape just now. So I'll just stop and I'll give the outside a quick sand before I hollow out the inside. So I'll stop the video while I'm sanding, obviously due to the noise from the extractor. Okay, so that's me sanding it back now to about 600 grit. I'm just going to clear this bit of wastage away. And I'm just going to put a small parking cut in here. and define where the base is going to be before it gets made on. Okay, so I'll slow it down and before I start hauling I'm just going to get a piece of web racks, my web, whatever you call it, and just give it a quick rub over the top. Okay, so that's 
The outside shape, as you can see, it's quite a plain piece of sycamore. Small bit of a character there, but not much. Uh, so we're now going to start hollowing. Right, first part of the hollowing I'm going to do, all I'm going to do is drill a hole down the middle with a, a high speed drill. I'll have the speed of the lathe turned down low so that it doesn't overheat the wood. This just helps with the hollowing out, makes it a bit easier. So you just go in and back out every now and again just to clear the rubbish. And back in again. Sorry about the squeal there. Okay, prior to hollowing on the edge itself, I just like to put a small groove heading down into the pot itself. This just gives the eye something to look down into the vessel itself. So just a small chamfer, and that's all you want. Now, I'm going to make it roughly about 3mm thick all the way down. Ok, so for hollowing, you can start off with a spindle gouge, just using the edge of the tool. almost like a shear scrape. It's actually quite effective and it does give you a good finish. I'll just move my rest a bit closer because it's starting to vibrate. Now obviously health and safety, you would stop the lathe before you move your tool rest. And again, all I'm doing is just pivoting the spindle gouge around a fulcrum where my fingers are, and just arcing it out. You can actually do most of the hollowing with your spindle gouge or a bowl gouge, but on today's market, there are so many different hollowing tools. Um, you know, obviously hauling, people that do hauling, it's a case of hollow a bit, stop and empty out the rubbish. So it's a lot of stop and starting all the time. The tools I'm going to use today, if you can see them, is the Crown... I um, can't remember what it's called. <laughs> Small hollowing tool and a Robert Sorby tool as well. Okay, okay so hollowing with the Robert Sorby. Nice, gentle cut. Backwards and forwards. And with a small crown, Put it in at an angle, it's like a half ring cutter with an adjustable tip on it. Handle slightly up so that the cutting edge is on centre. And again, just gently round. At the moment I'm just arcing it. And then I'm going from the side, as you can see, there's an awful lot of build up. Okay guys, that's the noise and the mess done. Um, We're sanded, hollowed and I've put a coat of sand and sealer on and denibbed it back. Um, as the more astute of you will notice, this is no longer a piece of sycamore. <laughs> it's a piece of alder. Um, I got distracted and I had a slight catch and broke off the edge of the rim. As you can probably see if I bring it into, into view. So that will be turned into something else later. Okay, we're now going to start applying colour. 
four colours in all. We start off with the base coat, and for the base coat I'll be using chestnut ebonising lacquer in an aerosol. I'll give the whole outside and inside of the, the hollow form a coating of that, just a light coating, uh, and that dries off really quickly, so I might have time to go and make a cup of coffee while that's drying. The colours I'll be using are these three here. Now normally Mark Rabbi and David Atkinson use Joe Sonia paints. Unfortunately I don't have any at the moment so I popped down a local art shop and I found these three metallic colours. Just acrylic paint. So they'll be going over in the end. Okay, so as I said we shall be given the whole form a coating of black first. Okay, so applying the chestnut ebonising lacquer, I'll rotate the lathe by hand and I'll just give the vessel a light coat. As I said, this stuff is very good, it dries extremely quickly. And we only need to give this just a light coat. Just enough to make sure that the whole vessel is black. And also inside. Okay, so that's just coated in the, the ebonising lacquer. So I'll go and make myself a cup of coffee while that's flashing off. And I'll come back and we'll start applying the colours. Okay, that's made my coffee, where ebonising lacquer is now dry and I'm about to apply the colours. The colours I'll be using, that's all I'm going to use, I don't need a lot. Metallic green, blue and yellow. And remind, I'm just using cheap acrylic metallics from an art shop. Now to apply the colours, all I do is get a blob of paint on my finger and it's basically finger painting. So this one's going to be green to start with, whereas the one last night was blue as the major colour. Now as you start, it doesn't look very impressive. But as you build the colours up, it starts to look a bit nicer. And again, this is just play about until you get the colour that you like, or the, the design that you like. So we'll just keep putting colour on. Okay, so that's the first application of green. You can put more on if you want after. So I'm going to go to yellow next. And you can mix colours over. And again, just play about until your heart's content and that you get the desired effect that you're after. Very, very simple technique. Even I can do it. Okay, so we'll go for a bit of blue now. It's nice little swirls. Just keep adding. Don't forget to put stuff around the rim as well. I try not to go inside, but around the rim is fine. Okay, and I'm going back. 
back to adding a little bit more green. Doesn't matter if you smudge the colours that's on there. Okay, so that's just about done. You can just blend in as you're going along. Just add a tiny bit more paint as you want just to get the overall effect. As I said, it's simple finger painting. Okay, so that's us just about finished with the colour. Okay, so here we are. Left on the chuck, I'm going to leave it overnight for the paint to dry off and then I'll seal it and put some acrylic lacquer over the top and part it off. Okay, so I'll show you once it's finished. I'll take a still picture tonight and put it on the web. And thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed it and it gives you a bit of inspiration to do some yourself. Again, thanks very much. Bye.